Hey guys, Darren with you here for East Woodland Survival. It's getting on up in the day today, so I uh, thought I'd make a little dinner, and I'm going to make some uh, uh, traditional good southern meal, uh, salt pork or salt bacon, and fried corn fritters or uh, Johnny Cakes, Hoe Cakes, uh, Corn Dodgers, I've heard them called a million names, but uh, I'm going to show you how easy that is to make uh, on an open fire, just using a cast iron skillet and some bacon grease. Um, I'll show you the recipe. Uh, we're going to go through salt pork, uh, how to make it, uh, how to eat it, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. Stay tuned. This is traditional salt pork. I've already cut a couple of pieces off. It's just bacon, pork belly, and I uh, already cut these off just to let you see what they look like in there. And uh, basically, we're just going to Throw those in the pan, let them get cooking a little bit. You can hear it sizzling up. And then uh, this, I just got it wrapped up in some cheesecloth here, just to help protect it a little bit. But you can see it's just a slab of bacon. It's just pork belly. And uh, traditionally, I mean, this has been had uh, by many cultures for thousands of years. Uh, because this stuff will keep without refrigeration. Uh, it's been salted for about seven days. That's the cure on it. And you can make this at home really easy. You just need to get a pork belly, which you can get from a, a butcher. You need to pack it in salt, top and bottom. And I always like to put it skin side, which is that side there, skin side down, put the salt on top, salt on the bottom, salt the sides, and you let it set in a cool place. You can do it in your refrigerator if you don't have a smokehouse. Uh, you can uh, let it set for about seven days. Make sure you check the salt. Make sure you change it out if it looks really yellowish or something, because that's just the water getting, getting drawn out of it. And uh, that's what you're after. But this will keep for a long time. Uh, my grandmother ate this probably every morning for breakfast lived to be 96 years old, had never had beef in her entire life. So uh, we're just going to go through them. I'll show you how to, you just fry this up just like bacon. Uh, you can see it sizzling away right there. It's good stuff. So uh, we'll fry this up a little bit and uh, I'll get back with you in a minute and we'll cook, cook up some traditional uh, fried cornbread fritters. Uh, rain's moving in a little bit. You can see it kind of frying up there. I'll zoom in a little bit on it. And then uh, when this is done, uh, we'll get started on our uh, our uh, fried corn fritters. All right, guys, my bacon's getting good and crispy there. Uh, trying to keep a rain cover on my camera here. Uh, <clears throat> you need to make sure it's cooked thoroughly. It'll crisp up just like regular bacon. I'm just going to take this off and let it uh, let it dry a little bit and let it drain. I'm going to use just a piece of bark to drain it on. Just some hickory bark I've peeled up. <coughs> and we'll just take this thing, just kind of pull it out and set this up on it. That'll be good and crispy. We're just going to set this to the side and let it uh, let it cool off and drain a little grease in it. Now we're going to start on our corn fritters. Uh, pretty simple recipe. It's just cornmeal, a little bit of flour uh, in this. For a little flavor, I use a little buttermilk powder. Uh, just gives a little bit of a buttermilk taste to it. And uh, I usually put everything in a little bag like this because it's just so easy to uh, transport, put everything out in portion size and uh, I can knead this bag up without having to mix it and I'm not like getting another uh, plate or bowl or something like that dirty that I'm going to have to wash and waste water on. So uh, this mix is about a cup and just a little over, uh, you know, maybe a couple of tablespoons over. And uh, we're going to add some water to it until it forms kind of a really thick, stiff batter. 
So uh, usually start with about a half a cup of water. You can actually hear the rain hitting my pan in there. So we'll start with about a half a cup of water. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it a little bit. It's always best to go with less at first because you can add to it, but you can't take it away. We're just going to mix this up into a stiff batter. That is about right, guys. Good eyeball in there. You can see it's a pretty stiff batter in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to push this down, kind of all toward the bottom. We're going to make just like a piping bag out of it, like they use for icing and stuff. We'll cut a little tip off of this and uh, put it directly in the pan, but I'm going to add just a little bit more baking grease that I've got. Don't want a whole lot. Just a little bit. I'm a huge fan of cast iron. Everybody says it weighs too much, too heavy. But uh, for holding the heat, and it's pretty much non-stick, You've got it seasoned correct. All right, I'm gonna push all this down into the bottom like that. Now I'm just gonna make like a piping bag. I'm gonna cut this tip off. I'm gonna use my knife. <coughs> just gonna cut this tip a little bit. Then I'm going to make like a little, oh, uh, about that big around or so, little patties in here. You can kind of flatten it out a little bit if it needs to. Got the dough a little thick, but it'll work. I'm just going to let it sit there for a few minutes. I'll move that one to the side. Go ahead and get another one going. You'll get three or four out of this bag, depending on the size you make them. We'll get about four, maybe five out of this batch. Once you see the edges start to brown a little bit, <coughs> you can flip them. Also, you can kind of feel that they stiffen up on the bottom. Well, that one's going to break on me. You can see it's got a nice golden brown color. These others will turn out better. I think I got it squeezed out a little better, the other two. Just let those set for a minute and cook, and uh, uh, I'll flip them over for you here in a second and let you see them again, what they look like and how they do. They're going to absorb a lot of the oil in the pan, and uh, you want to cook them all the way through. Usually they'll bubble up, and uh, I don't know if you can see, but some of them are already starting to bubble a little bit in the center. It's going to be a dense, thick cake. It's going to be a little salty from the salt bacon, but uh, you can put a little honey on this, have it for breakfast. Uh, maple syrup, really good. Uh, I know uh, camping and stuff, we've always like cooked salt pork before, the night before, and uh, fry up some corn fritters and uh, have them for breakfast. So you can do everything, you don't have to build a big fire, and uh, uh, you're ready to go hunting or something right out of the gate in the morning. Okay.
Gonna have to set there just a little bit longer. You see it's a pretty good non-stick pan, nothing sticking to the, to the pan. Yep. Not a very good spatula, but that was a good one. All right, I'll let these cook up, guys. Uh, you can see what they're how they're kind of turning a nice golden brown like that. That's what you're wanting. They'll cook all the way through. You'll see the sides start to come up on both sides of them, and turn a little bit brown, and uh, they'll be ready. So a couple more minutes, uh, I'll flip them back over, and we'll I'll show you what they're like. Uh, I'll eat one of them, and uh, you can try one yourself. Uh, I'll give you the recipe for this if you'd like to try them yourself. It's a good traditional southern meal. Guys, it's a good traditional southern meal. Just add some uh, pinto beans, green onions, uh, fried potatoes. Uh, a good southern meal right there. Country ham would be even better than the salt bacon, but salt pork. It's salt pork after it's been cooked. You can see it's kind of crispy. That's kind of breaks apart like bacon. Not really crispy and really salty, but it's good. I get to craving it sometimes. Alright, these are starting to brown up a little bit. Starting to get done toward the middle. That's a good whole cake right there. Didn't break apart on me too bad. This one broke apart. I guess it doesn't really matter how it breaks apart if you're hungry. You'll eat it. I'm going to flip those back over. You can see it's getting done in the middle. See how airy and light this is? It's just cornbread. Mm. Mm. That one right there is perfection. A good corn fritter or corn dodger. Now these things will last several days. You can put these inside a, a plastic bag or anything like that and you need on these for several days. You can cook up a bunch ahead of time and uh, have them on the trail. Mm. That's really good. You can see it's a really dense bread. It's perfect for carbohydrates. It's a really good thing if it's cold out night time eat this before bed warm you up put a little honey maple syrup good stuff all right guys this darum well you should live in survival thank you for tuning in thank you for watching i appreciate everybody hope you enjoyed the video have any uh, questions just please ask Rate, comment, subscribe. Appreciate all of you. And I hope to see you guys in the woods.